Hey guys, Thomas Twain here, and today I'm bringing you some more early access greatness, but in this case, it's more okayness. This one is called Colony Survival. Hopping right into the options menu, you can see video. Really good, pretty nice options menu. So yeah, pretty much a lot of stuff maxed out. The stuff I have turned off is kind of obnoxious. You're going to want to turn it off anyway. Full screen, light scattering, eye adaptation. Depth the field, shut that off. Anti aliasing, FXA, high sun shadow quality, maximum shadow distance, maximum FOV slider, 40 all the way to 110. I'm at 100. V sync off, shader quality high, medium low, ambient reflections, terrain constant, tons of stuff. You can really max crank the graphics in this game or lower them a ton. Audio, separate audio sliders for a lot of things. The master volume effects, ambient, separate slider for torches. That's that's really good. You wouldn't expect that in every other game. Gameplay, sensitivity, mouse settings. You can remap your keys if you'd like. Language, some different languages here. Not a whole lot. But if you're speaking English and playing in English, then it works just fine. Does come in single player and multiplayer. Let's jump right into the single player and see what it goes. Oh, let's load game. And this one. We're going to jump right into a world and see what you're exactly supposed to be doing. Now, let's see. So now we're in the game, and if you look at it, you're probably wondering, since when did Minecraft get such a nice rework? Well, it didn't. This is Colony Survival. It has the same voxel texture mapping and all that stuff with a very harsh difference. If you've ever used the, I for, there, there's a specific mod that this reminds me of, I forget what it's called, but essentially it's like, it's another colony simulator, but that's voxel and survival based. So you essentially, you run a colony basically. As you can see, I have a bunch of people set up to farm this wheat. They will pit, they will plant and pick it constantly this wheat grows every two in-game days they replant it given there's enough wheat seeds or future bread you have this guy over here he harvests trees he grows them and cuts them down as you can see with these loading bars at the top of their heads you can see the progress on what they're doing these crates here that look like crates are used by the villagers to put items into the stockpile this is what this is you can access the stockpile from anywhere, but when you take something out of it, the only people that have access, if you take something out of it, only you have access to it. The rest of the villagers can only access items that are in the stockpile. This guy over here is an artisan. He auto crafts items for me. You can set limits to what he needs to craft. So you, sh so you can make it so there's always gonna be one pickaxe in the what was, what was the word what was the word I was saying? the stockpile so there will always be one pickaxe in the stockpile always one axe and just looking at these item icons you can very much tell that this is in very early access but seeing as you don't really use these it's it's fine coming over here this is my furnace smithy area this guy's melting gold bars bricks Bricks, that's, that's a thing? I never realized that. I've never found any clay. Coming down here, you can see that there is a mine all the way down here. You can rush down the mine shaft, coming straight down. You see you have your, your happy miners down here. Since it's in early access, all you can see them is standing there and loading bars come up. And every occasional while, they drop ores into this. The way it works is, you have to dig down pretty much a shaft like so until you reach this layer. At this layer, you can continuously break these items and they will never be removed from the game. So if you want more stone, you just have to set one of these miners to harvest this stone. You can see it's highlighted in the blue. If you need gypsum, you highlight the, the white. Gold, you highlight the yellow. And coal, you highlight the black. As you can see, with four, you only need four miners until you get bigger and you're going to want more. Coming out of the mine, we're going to see, and also you probably notice it, it's kind of weird, the texture of some of these blocks. Like, they, like the grass and the dirt, they look like 
fuzzy to me. And I find it like really off-putting. Coming up here, you can see you have I have six guards here. They each have their their quivers, and they're all equipped with a bow and arrow. You can't actually see it though. This isn't very early access, but it is in a playable state. Over here, just for funsies, I built this clock. It's built off the the sunlight. As you can see, there's the sun over there. It's currently reading the time as. See if that's nine, that's ten and a half. So it's about eleven o'clock. About to be noon, and that's very important to keep note because if you're outside like I am without a weapon, you do not want to be swamped by zombies. You can sprint just by holding the shift, so you can easily outrun the zombies. That's not an issue. And you can, as you can see, they're harvesting the wheat and depositing it in the boxes. I am making this wheat farm much bigger. As you can see, I have 166 wheat seeds, so I can go ahead and expand on this territory, and I'll show you how that's done. In the hotbar, you can see there's two options here under the health, the command tool, and the banner tool. We're going to show what the banner tool is first, because that's the most important part of this game. This is the main mechanic. The banner tool allows you to place this banner, like so. This is what will let you recruit new colonists. They cost 5 food per day, require a bed. And recruiting one will cost you 50 food units. At the top right, you can see the very basic food, food a day, and arrows. To help you keep track of your management and resources. The food gives you just a grand total, how much food you have available in the stockpile. You can see I have 528 bread. They have a food value of 3. That is what is being represented here. Food a day, that's how much these villagers need to eat. So since I have 21 colonists, there needs to be eaten 105 of them. And then we look into the command tool. You see you have four different options right now. The wheat farmer, forester, flax farmer, and the miner. The wheat farmer, just like so, you're going to right click right here. And as you see, it selects a one by one farm. It's too small. You just want to go out to a 10 by 10 and not left click. You're going to want to right click actually. You're going to right click that once it's at 10 by 10 and it's going to zone this area for wheat farming as you can see on the bottom left now it says no unemployed colonists available so moving back to the banner tool you're going to want to recruit a new colonist and if you do so it's going to say you don't have enough free beds which means you're going to need more beds so we're going to run into the castle and place a new bed coming up here it's all built player made just a bunch of barracks it might not look nice but it doesn't really matter crafting is very basic you just need the items in your crafting bar in order to craft them. As you can see, the bed takes three planks and three straw. So we're going to grab the straw here, stack of 50 planks like so, and craft some beds. It's that easy. There's no crafting time. And you place them down with the right click. And I placed that one into the wall and it disappeared on me. But now we have a bunch more beds, 27 beds, 21 colonists, negative one unemployment. A negative unemployment basically means there are jobs that are being left unfulfilled because there aren't enough colonists. So now we recruit new colonists, like so. Nothing happens, not yet. And as you can see, he is born out of the banner. And now he will be a planter. He's going to go over there and start planting food. And now as nightfall comes, the villagers will go to sleep, except for these guards here that are in the front because they never sleep, they never blink, they never actually move. It's actually really weird. But they have a duty to perform and they do it very well. Because as nighttime falls, zombies will appear and try to kill your people. At first I had two guards and I thought they would do their job fine, but I went AFK and when I came back my villagers were dying and a zombie almost pushed me off the roof of this building here. So from this high vantage point, you can see the zombies are actually coming as I speak. They have glowing blue eyes, and the number of zombies that come increases every time you create a new colonist, which means as your colony grows, you're going to need more guards. But since guards are colonists, creating more guards will increase the number of zombies which comes, which means you're going to need more guards, which puts you in this constant positive feedback loop where you're creating more guards to stop more zombies, in turn, you're going to need more guards to stop the ever-increasing amount of zombies. But now, because you have so many guards, you actually need some more food. Now that you need more food, you're going to need more colonists to plant this food, because one colonist can only harvest a, hundred, a 10 by 10 area of wheat, 
And because you need more colonists to produce more wheat, you're going to need more gardeners to defend against the more zombies that are coming to take the wheat. And because of that, you're going to need more wheat to feed the new guards. And it's just this cycle of ever-increasing food, colonist, zombie. But the zombies are actually very easy. If you just dig a moat around anything and funnel them onto a bridge, there's really nothing they can do. The guards have a pretty good accuracy rating and a very long range. It's about 10 meters if these blocks are 1 meter by 1 meter. So as you can see, there's three coming in the line there, and they're pretty much dying over there because of these guards. I doubt there will ever be enough to overwhelm six guards because they have an attack speed of like 1.5 seconds. So the only way it could truly go wrong is if I run out of arrows. Because as long as there are arrows in the stockpile, they will continue to shoot. But you can run out of arrows, and only I'm available to craft them at night, and I can only craft so many before I run out of resources. Which means during the day, I need the artisan to stock up on the arrows for me, which is very simple. But once you get to this big point, there's not really a whole lot for the player to do exactly. You can always build, you can always create new stuff. But in the current build as is, it is very early access. There's not a whole lot to build with. Going to the crafting slot, you can see there is a mint you can build. I actually have one right here. That requires a guy. And that's going to produce gold coins, which will allow you to use the shop. And the shop's the only thing you can use the gold coins on. But the only thing you can buy right now is expensive flax seeds. And the flax seeds are only good for lin linseed oil. The linseed oil, uh, the linseed oil is only good for coated planks, with this, which is basically shiny wood and adobe, which is shiny dirt. Which means there's not a whole lot to do besides from just building bigger and bigger farms. I'm pretty sure you can actually just build a farm in the sky using all the dirt you have collected. So as you see, I have 280 dirt. It's dirty. It's a bunch of wood. You can not you can barely actually tell which is which when you put it together. Because the dirt's brown and the wood's brown. They look exactly the same. But other than highlighting it, you can't really tell. But as the daylight comes back, the zombies just die and the cycle continues. This is a pretty chill game just for watching your colony do stuff and increasing it every now and then.